Make sure to stay tuned for an exclusive interview with the New Brunswick Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Jennifer Russell. Go Spartans, go! <laughs> Screen time is very commonly talked about in today's day and age, especially when it comes to teens and their phones. With so many different types of screens around us, no wonder it's such a big concern. These include TVs, laptops, tablets, phones, and even screens in our cars. So how much screen time is too much? As you can see, one of our students' biggest distractions are their cell phones. We have the world right at our fingertips. And unfortunately, during the pandemic, the only way to contact our friends and loved ones were through screens. When the coronavirus hit, the government enforced school closures as part of the containment strategy. Virtual learning then became vital for ensuring some class participation. Between online lessons, scrolling through social media, and binging new TV shows, screen time spiked to an all-time high during the pandemic. It is definitely an issue. Screens are taking up time where we could be doing our homework, reading a book, or sleeping. Teenagers spend an average of seven and a half hours on their screens per day. To put that into perspective, healthcare professionals suggest that children under the age of 18 spend a maximum of two hours per day on screens. Let's go take a look at some of our Spartan screen times. I have an average of four hours. So I have a pretty high average of 8 hours and 32 minutes of screen time. I spend an average about 8 to 10 hours on my phone a day. Uh, my average screen time is 6 hours. I have a wonderful screen time of a low 11 hours per day. Now we can plainly see that screen time is a massive issue. Both adults and students alike are spending way too much time on their devices. Did you know that studies show that the more time you spend on screens, the higher the risk of depression and anxiety, as well as chronic neck and back pain you will have. Three in four teenagers from the ages of 15 to 18 bring technology into their bedrooms. 57% of those teens that are using screens in their bedrooms have sleeping problems and report of worse sleep when they have a TV or a small screen in their rooms. Here are a few strategies to help you minimize screen time. Like we said before, the biggest problem is at night. Teenagers are supposed to get up to 8 to 10 hours of sleep a night, but it has become a norm for the vast amount to stay up until 4 a.m. just to get up three hours later. It's important to try and minimize screen time before bed and try not to keep it next to you when you're trying to fall asleep. Keeping it next to you is a distraction alone. When you go to bed, Put your phone across the room or even outside of your room so the temptation isn't as strong. The same thing goes for when you're trying to get work done. You should put your screen down at least 30 minutes before you go to bed. Instead, read a book or try to journal. Set a screen curfew and encourage your family to reduce screen time earlier in the day. Make sure you have a variety of hobbies to do besides screens in your free time. During the pandemic, it's been hard to find things to do, especially since we can't have large social gatherings, play sports, and do other activities. I can definitely speak for myself when I say I finished about 20 new series on Netflix over the course of this pandemic. It can be especially hard for students because we have to spend a minimum of five hours a day on screens on our off days at school. In addition to our phones and video games that we play in our free time, it is especially important to limit ourselves and minimize the amount of screens that we use. So, reflect on the amount of time you're spending on your screens and think, is it really that necessary? Now that I've finally learned some of these essential screen time strategies, I can finally get a good night's sleep. Waking up somewhat early is important for students on their at-home learning days. Starting the day off on the right foot and creating routines are crucial right now. Last episode, we talked about how the pandemic has affected teens and their mental health. This month, we want to talk a little bit more about isolation and wellness, and also discuss how to implement healthy routines and hobbies to get through these tough times. We talked to Jennifer Grunt, coordinator of school counselling and former guidance lead for the Anglophone South School District, about all this and more. I'm here with Ms. Grant to talk about wellness and healthy routines during isolation. And how are you today, Ms. Grant? 
Very well, thank you for having me on Spartan News today. Thank you so much. Okay, so to start off, how do you think the pandemic has affected our students' day to day lives and mental health? That's an excellent question. And as I was thinking about that um, in preparation for today, I was kind of thinking there are pros and cons. I have a really unique opportunity to see this pandemic both as a parent, but also as an educator and a member of our school district staff and seeing how it's affected our kids both on a personal level, but also through school. Um, I think there are definitely some good things that are coming out of it. And um, when we talk to some of our school administrators, they're enjoying the smaller class sizes, they're finding that um, they're able to address some academic needs with their kids, they're building on students' social emotional skills and well-being, so allowing them to work through problem-solving skills, develop interpersonal relationships a little bit better, work on conflict resolution, and so there are good things um, to this as we have learned uh, through education. Obviously, there's been some great advances in working through technology as we're meeting today and being able to fo move forward with this interview. And so it has encouraged both our educators and our teachers to really, um, and sorry, educators and students to really think outside the box when we um, look at learning and how we can access learning. And so I work with student services. And so when we think of down the road when we have students who may have a an illness or end up having to be out of school for an extended period of time we know that this technology exists now um, which will allow them to stay connected to not only their academic work but socially to their friends um, on some of the contrary things you know there are definitely um, some things and challenges that have happened with our kiddos. Um, obviously, for some students at the high school level, it's a bit of a challenge as well, not being able to access their teachers on a daily basis to get support. We know that it's taken a toll on extracurricular activities. And when we talk about mental health, those outlets that we need to strengthen our mental wellness by connections with um, healthy relationships with adults, with healthy relationships with our friends, um, extracurricular activities such as sports and drama or art classes, Club has definitely had a toll on kids not being able to um, fulfill those um, needs that they need and obviously their strengths where they want to be with their with their doing things with their buddies. Um, but we also know that kids have been really resilient. Um, I find myself being reminded by my own children about the different phases and restrictions and regulations around mask use, but kids are getting tired. Definitely. Um, there are uh, challenges with the ever-changing phases and the changes within the phases and um, you know we're seeing that across the board for us we, we would call it zoom fatigue right being online all the time and and for you at the high school having routines that are have changed now with the synchronized learning and so um, it, it's been a challenge for sure for everybody around their mental health and how do you find those outlets uh, to promote and build your wellness uh, within the restrictions of the pandemic. What are some practical ways for us to improve our mental health and how do you think that students can implement the healthy routines during the pandemic? I think Kate you've hit the nail on the head when you say routine. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, we find ourselves creatures of habit and if we enjoy a little lion in the morning and not aren't necessarily morning people we would tend to shift our learning to later in the day but I think really what is important is to maintain that routine um, for ourselves adults included right I know sometimes for some students um, home learning days are a challenge but keeping a routine of getting up at a decent hour um, making sure you're connecting with your classes at their specific time for your 10 minute check ins is important, maintaining good work habits while you're at home, and then being able to time manage if you do have homework assignments and things. And obviously, you want to make a list of things of all the things you want to talk to your teachers about when you see them face to face the next day. So that is really important when we talk about the academic side, but when we want to look at our mental health routine is still really important there too. You want to schedule time for breaks. Um, that's just as important. We know that you're using computers both at school and at home. So taking time away from the screen is is excellent. Um, I know many kids 
use their technology now to connect with friends and connecting with friends is so important especially right now when we are in this orange phase and we're not able to see as many people facetime calls to help to study for tests or just to connect and check how things are doing i think is really great and kids are probably savvier than some of their family members about using that technology to connect with family and others which is really essential especially for family who may live in a different zone in, in the province or even you know in a different country which is lovely that we have this technology technology now to connect us. I think we also need to be mindful of healthy eating habits, um, maintaining, you know, our good food groups and not uh, over abusing some of the good stuff, <laughs> right? When we may be at home and, and be snacking, but maintaining, you know, having a good breakfast and, and stopping for a lunch break, which is really great. Um, and also trying to find time for some physical activity, whether it's just a small walk around the block where you live, getting outside, playing with your pets, um, I think is really great. Again, it's a break from the technology, but going outside and, and you know, having especially this time of year where our vitamin D is deficient a little bit in the winter months. Uh, we need to try to get outside and get some fresh air as much as possible um, when we can. We're really fortunate that we live in a beautiful part of the country where we can access a lot of outdoor activities and trails and Ganong Nature Park and the new trail downtown are wonderful ways um, to get that physical activity. And I think the last thing would be um, about setting goals really important to be, uh, whether it's a personal goal or an academic goal that you want to strive to do, it just helps keeps us focused uh, with the end in mind and um, things that we want to accomplish uh, while we're trying to do this uh, kind of double standard learning when it comes to high schools being day on and day off. So thank you so much for your ideas. I believe that it would truly valuable for our students and everyone in our community to hear about these, about our mental health. We loved Mrs. Grant's advice to go easy on yourself and get outside. We also want to hear what our St. Stephen High School students are doing to improve their mental health. Let's go see. I usually work on a puzzle every day and I always read and go to sleep early every night. I like to work out almost every day and eat healthy to keep my energy up. I like to wake up early in the mornings to start my day, even when I don't have school. Hi, I'm Victoria, a grade 11 student from St. Stephen High School, and I'm going to be talking about what's been on a lot of our minds recently, and it's what is March break going to look like this year? This is the first March break we have with COVID, and where travel isn't a safe option, we have to make use of the environment around us. This March break, just because we're home, doesn't mean we can't spend time outside. This may not be Florida, but the nature is still very beautiful. Hiking, snowboarding, skiing, and snowshoeing are a great idea to bond with your family over the March break. So do you have any interesting plans this March break? Um, every weeknight of March break, me and my family are going to do a theme night on what we would normally do for March break. So we're going to have a cruise night and a few Disney nights. And on the Friday and Saturday of March break, I'm going skiing. That sounds fun. How do you think COVID will affect this March break? Um, I think it'll affect it a lot because we have to stay in our health zone and normally we would go to Florida or something. So it's a lot different. Florida? Sounds really nice. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are you planning on doing anything interesting this March break? Well, I plan on, you know, listening to a lot of music, obviously, and playing guitar and maybe recording something. You know, I don't know yet, but we'll see how it turns out. That sounds very cool. And how do you think COVID will affect this break? Well, I don't really travel much anyways, so I, I don't think it'll affect me much. We're here with Miss Anderson about the breakfast program. And Miss Anderson, what is the breakfast program? Um, the breakfast program, we actually call it the breakfast club, and it's an opportunity for students that um, didn't have a chance to have breakfast or maybe they don't have the opportunity to have breakfast. Um, it just gives them a time in the morning where they can, they don't have to worry about getting breakfast at home. They can just come to school and they know that they'll have a, a hot, nutritious breakfast waiting for them. And do you have to pay for the these items? And if so, how much? Um, we've, we've got a great program. It's, um, we we do 
ask folks if they want to to give something to the breakfast program. It's two dollars per item, so two dollars for a smoothie, two dollars for a breakfast sandwich, two dollars for pancakes. Um, there are some students that we have in school that are not able to get breakfast in the morning and it's just a little bit of a financial strain. So we make arrangements to have those students get be given a uh, punch card. And so they'll just come and get their card punched and every punch on their card is worth uh, worth one item at our, our breakfast club. Now you can purchase a punch card and uh, the punch cards are, are ten dollars and it's good for five breakfast items but the the thing that's great about this is nobody knows who has bought their punch cards and nobody knows who has been given their punch cards so i think it's a, a really great way to avoid the stigma of students that that can't afford something like that so um i really like that part of the the breakfast club uh, I just like to say, start off with saying thank you for everything you do for the breakfast program and all the students, because that's that's a lot, a lot to do, a lot of free time that you're taking from your plate. Well, I would just, it's um, it, it's funny that you bring up, you know, the you know the spare time and the extra time that it takes. It's one of those things where there is a need, and I've got the time to do it. Um, as far as the money coming in, we've been very fortunate to get um, some grants, some uh, some donated money, some donated food, and people realize that there's an importance for it. And and I I look at you guys, you guys need to be happy and healthy and not have to worry about something like that, especially breakfast in the morning. Yeah, definitely. I know that there's like a lot of people that sometimes like don't have the food and stuff like that and I, I'm sure that they're very like appreciated that you do this for them very thankful yeah I think so thank you very much you guys well and thank you for doing the interview it really meant a lot we're here in the home mech room where all the magic happens thank you so much to Miss Anderson for dedicating her time to the breakfast club anytime you're hungry in the morning come on down and grab a bite to eat this month on Spartan TV we were lucky enough to get an exclusive interview with our chief medical officer Dr. Jennifer Russell what are some things that you've done over the course of the pandemic to maintain a good mental health great question and I think everybody's self-care list is different uh, and I Google this stuff all the time. So I, you know, if you Google self-care list, you'll find a bazillion. And I, but I think they all have the same theme in terms of uh, what keeps you nourished uh, from a mental health perspective. Uh, so things that make you happy, you know, whether it's a hobby or something, make sure that you try to do that every day, uh, whether it's um, crafts or arts or sports or music or whatever, uh, make sure you, you, you really take time to do that every day making sure that you reach out to your friends and family. Um, if you can't see them in person, reach out to them virtually, even if it's to just pick one person a day um, and do that. Um, I, I have done some yoga and some meditation. Uh, I've gone to retreats and learned about those kinds of things. So I can, I can do those. I try to take a bath every day and have a cup of tea. So there's some rituals that you build into uh, the relaxation. So your body's triggered saying, oh, it's time to relax now. This is what it means when I get my tea and I have my bath and your body knows it's time to kind of gear down. Um, sometimes people really find journaling helpful. I really like to journal. Um, so those are some of the really common things that you can see on, on a self-care list that, that you can do every day. And it's almost like a little checklist. And again, it's different for everybody, but the themes are about connecting with people, doing something you love and, uh, and things that are good for your body, whether it's exercise, drinking water, et cetera, and eating healthy food, obviously. As we know, no career comes without challenges or hurdles. What are some difficulties that you had in your educational journey? Well, um, I think I think when you put pressure on yourself to succeed at something, you you set yourself up with the expectations, and 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 you do need some of that to succeed, obviously. But if you put too much pressure on yourself. Uh, it can sometimes be paralyzing and you're supposed to be studying, but you're thinking, well, what if I fail? And what if this doesn't work out? And all of those what ifs start to play and you can become really literally paralyzed. And I think some people do that procrastination thing and overcoming that and understanding that, okay, well, I have to not think about all of that. I just have to do what I have to do right now, which is open up the book, look at the words 
study them and and move forward and set a timer and take lots of breaks. So I think the you know overcoming some of the that that paralysis when you get really overwhelmed is is a challenge. Um, but in terms of my career, I think um, medicine has been a very fulfilling career. And I think when people are able to choose a career path in doing something they love, then you can put your whole heart into it. You can put pour blood, sweat and tears and, and see those accomplishments uh, along the way. Um, I did join the military uh, when I was in med school. So uh, in my second year med school, uh, I joined the military and they paid the rest of my way through med school. And I would have to say that, um, each time you take on a challenge uh, that you think, oh, this, uh, you know, this is going to be a certain level of difficulty and I can achieve this, you have a certain level of confidence, but sometimes you have things thrown at you that you weren't expecting, like, oh, this is harder than I thought, or maybe I can't do this. But, um, but I think along the way, every time you have an opportunity to push yourself, I think that is something that be, can, can be really rewarding. So when you have two paths to choose from, I think it was from my that poem about the the path left the the path less traveled. I forget what poem that's from, but uh, but whenever you do something that challenges you, the reward in terms of that hard work and that accomplishment and that achievement is is so great. So, how do you feel that you have grown throughout this entire experience with COVID? Hmm. Well. So this ties in with things that happen in your life that, again, you, you're, you're prepared for one thing, but then something else sort of comes your way that's a bit more challenging. And you're kind of like, well, I, I, I was comfortable here, but now this more challenging thing is happening. And how am I supposed to deal with that? But uh, but you end up again, you just think just just dig deep and go hard and, and, and it can happen. So when I was in um, trying to get into medical school and I was in my science degree at UNB and I would think, oh, this is really hard. This is really hard. Uh, and I think, oh, but medical school is going to be harder. So I would just sort of think, well, I can do this because I've got this other thing ahead of me that that's going to require even more energy and more dedication and more work. So I'm going to do this work now because I can get to that next place by doing this work, knowing that I'll have to step up my game at the next level. And so in med school, I thought, oh, this is really hard. Oh my gosh, how am I going to get through this? Like, well, I have to get through this because then I have residency and boy, is that ever going to be hard? So, and then in residency, when you're sleep deprived and it's really stressful and you don't remember how many hours it's been since you actually ate or slept and you think, oh my gosh, this is really hard. How am I going to do this? But wait, when I'm a real doctor, that's going to be even harder. So I have to do this. And then I joined the military <laughs> and that was hard. <laughs> and so I am, you're sleep deprived and you're in pain and you're hungry and you're kind of scared because you're doing stuff that's kind of scary yeah. sometimes. And, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is so hard. How am I going to do this? And I thought, well, I'm planning to have kids after this. And I think that's going to be harder. So I got to work really hard right now. So after all this, I'm going to have children and that's going to be harder. And it, it was. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Perfect. So you just have to set yourself up that this is the thing that's going to get you to the next thing. And yeah. the next thing is probably going to be harder, but you can do that too. We talked about um, music uh, earlier. Um, is it okay if we play a little game with you? Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Would you mind unlocking your phone? Yeah. So basically, this is going to be a fun game called Guess That Song. Basically, we're okay. going to play um, the intro to a song, and we're mm -hmm. going to get you to guess the artist who sang it. Okay. And uh, what the song title is. Wow, this is just like when I studied music at university. This was our exam. Cool, okay. So, are you ready? Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to turn it way up. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's my song. <laughs> I wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so who's, yeah, who's the cats artist? Cat's Meow. That's called Cat's Meow. Mm -hmm. Cat's Meow, yeah. <laughs> So um, we actually uh, found out that you are uh, a singer um, and, you know, hobbies and music is definitely a very important thing. So can you maybe uh, touch on how important hobbies are during this time? Well, I mean, I think it goes with working and playing and having that balance that if you're, you know, everybody has to work, your school is your work. That's how you get ahead in life and, and become successful in terms of being able to do normal things in life. Um, but, uh, and so you always have to balance the work part with something fun. And it's ideal if it's healthy as well. Um, so you get that natural high. 
And uh, so I think, again, whatever hobby you have, uh, really try to indulge yourself in it in terms of uh, that creativity. So tapping into creativity or something that, again, just brings you joy, whether it's reading, um, you know, some people like to knit, some people like to, you know, build things, um, do carpentry work. So working with your hands, I think, is really therapeutic for some people as well. And on behalf of St. Stephen High School, we'd like to say thank you for all you've done, not only for us, but for our province. Thank you very much, <laughs> even Ian. It's been a pleasure. Like Dr. Russell was saying, a lot of us developed new hobbies over quarantine. Here are some Spartans that turned those hobbies into money makers. Um, I'm Victoria, and I'm interviewing people who have businesses over the corona season, and I'm here with Delaney Taylor. Hi, my name is Delaney, I'm in grade 12, and over Christmas I started an embroidery business called Sunday Embroidery. Um, can you tell me what you sell in Sunday Embroidery? It's mostly sweaters, but I've also done pants and t-shirts and tank tops and things like that. So did this just start as a hobby and you're just turning it into a career or how did that start? Yeah, well, it was actually like two years ago I started planning it because I started following this girl in California on Instagram and she uses an embroidery machine and has her little business and I thought it was super neat. So I did a lot of research and saved up some money and Finally got it this Christmas and started working on it and then a bunch of people were like, oh, I would totally buy your stuff. So then I was like, okay, I'll sell it to you. Um, how, how did people get in contact with you to buy your stuff? How are you selling this? I'm selling it over Instagram and Facebook and I also have an email where people can reach out to me. Perfect. Thank you. I'm here with Emma Tuttenham. Emma, tell me about yourself and your business that you created over the corona season. My business name is Comfy and Cozy Knits by Emma. Oh, I like that name. I knit handmade blankets, they're called chunky blankets, and I'm hoping to make hat mitts and scarves. That sounds really nice. Uh, if I were to buy one, how would I be able to do that? Right now, I don't really have a website or social media yet, but I'm hoping to have them soon. Uh, right now, you can just email me and we can do it through there. I can, you can take, I'll take your order and that sounds awesome. What inspired you to start this business? Well, I started it over COVID because I was bored and wanted to do <laughs> something new. So nice. that's when I started it. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I have a page on Facebook where you can contact me and find my products to buy them. It's called Comfy and Cozy Knits by Emma. We're having a giveaway. Hi, I'm here with Caitlin. Caitlin, could you tell me a bit about yourself and your business? Uh, of course, I am in grade 12 and I have a little business called Katie's Creations and I sell t-shirts. How did you get into selling t-shirts? What got you interested in that? Um, I guess I just, I started over quarantine looking for something to do and I was looking for hobbies and I decided why not do t-shirts. That was probably a perfect hobby to have over the quarantine. I probably kept you really busy That's selling all the t-shirts. Sure. Um, how do people get in contact with you to buy these t-shirts? Um, I have an Instagram and a Facebook page called Katie's Creations, and you can just message me on either at any time with anything you'd like. Perfect, thanks. Um, is this t-shirt that you're wearing right now one you made? Um, it is. It says kindness is contagious. Cute, perfect, thanks. quality of video improved a lot this month. A huge thank you goes out to Jeff Wilson of Brilliant Labs. We are so grateful for your help in funding our new equipment. Tune in next month to see an exclusive interview with Jeff.